Hello everyone, in this brief lecture, I will give you an overview of drug discovery and development process. First, I will talk about what drug discovery and development means and then I will talk about the different phases of drug discovery process and the drug development process with suitable examples. Later, I will conclude the talk with the challenges that are faced by modern drug discovery process. Drug discovery and development or in short drug DND aims to make available medications that are safe and effective in improving the length and quality of life and relieve pain and suffering. The drug DND comprises of all the events right from the discovery of a molecule to its testing in animals and in humans and any other system that are available to development of a formulation that can be administered to humans to the market approval to market the drug. However, the process is very complex, time consuming and resource intensive requiring multidisciplinary expertise and innovative approaches. It takes about 10 to 15 years to develop one new drug from the time it is discovered to when it is available for treating patients. The average cost to develop each successful drug is estimated to be 2.5 to 3.5 billion US dollars. This number includes the cost of the thousands of failures. For every 10,000 to 25,000 compounds that enter the research and development pipeline, probably only one may succeed and may get approval. The drug DND process can be divided into three phases pre discovery, drug discovery, and drug development. First, let us look at the pre discovery stage. It involves understanding the disease. This requires an in-depth knowledge of physiological, biochemical and pathological mechanisms that are responsible for the disease. Let us take the case of Parkinson's disease. In patients with Parkinson's, dopamine content of nigrostriatal pathway is very low. You will also find considerable loss of dopaminergic neurons in the nigrostriatal pathway. In the brains of these patients, in the histology you will find the presence of characteristic intracellular aggregates called Levy bodies which is made up of a mutated version of a protein called alpha synuclein. Now a deeper understanding of the Parkinson's require an understanding of all the following. Why only dopaminergic neurons are destroyed? Why aren't adrenergic or serotonergic neurons affected? What is the molecular mechanism of action of dopamine in these neurons? How is dopamine synthesized, stored and metabolized in these neurons? Since there is dopamine depletion, can we replenish the stores of dopamine? What is the reason for mutation of alpha synuclein in these patients? Is there any way to remove the accumulated alpha synuclein? What is the role of oxidative stress, inflammation and apoptosis in Parkinson's disease? So you see, a deeper understanding of physiological, biochemical and pathological mechanisms that play a role in the disease origin and its progression is very important. The next step is target identification. Here the component of the disease is chosen as a target for the drug to act on with the assumption that modification of the target will modify the disease. Let us take the example of insulin mediated glucose uptake. When food reaches stomach and intestine, chemical messengers called incretins are released. Incretins stimulate the beta cells of pancreas to release insulin. These incretins are later destroyed by the enzyme dipeptidylpeptidase. Later, insulin binds to the insulin receptors located on the skeletal muscles and cause translocation of GLUT4 glucose transporters to the cell membrane from their intracellular docking sites. Then, Glucose enters skeletal muscle through these transporters and is utilized for energy production. In some cases of type 2 diabetes, the release of insulin from the pancreas is reduced. This may affect glucose utilization by the muscle cells and cause hyperglycemia. So, which one of these components would you choose as a target for the drugs as part of your drug discovery strategy? Would you develop an incretin analog that will stimulate the beta cells to release insulin? Or would you target the DPP4 enzyme that degrades incretins? 
Or would you develop a drug that would stimulate the beta cells of pancreas to release insulin? Or would you target AMPK that would promote glucose uptake by alternative mechanisms? Or stimulate the PPA or gamma to improve insulin resistance? Or would you choose an SGL3 transporter inhibitor in the kidney to promote glucose excretion in urine? So, which one would you choose as the target for diabetes? But remember, you should choose the most appropriate target whose modification will modify the disease. This is a very complex and difficult task. In fact, there are more than a dozen biomolecules that are considered as high potential targets for diabetes. And suppose you have chosen an appropriate target from many possible targets. The next step is target validation. Target validation is done to confirm the role of the target in the disease pathology. The main aim is to confirm that the target is very important the disease pathology and its modification will definitely modify the disease. Let us take the case of obesity. Adipose tissue secretes a hormone called leptin. Leptin binds to leptin receptors located in hypothalamus and other brain regions that control energy balance and food intake. Activation of the receptor by leptin decreases food intake and therefore leptin signaling pathway is a valuable target for obesity. But the question is how much valuable the signaling pathway is as a target that can be ascertained by target validation. So, create a transgenic animal model with malfunctioned leptin signaling. If the animal exhibits excessive food intake, the role of leptin signaling is validated. That is what exactly happened in a leptin receptor knockout mice model where the genes for the leptin receptor was deleted. The animal exhibited hyperphagia and turned obese at a very young age. Therefore, the role of leptin signaling in obesity is validated. Once the target is validated, the next stage is drug discovery. The drug discovery stage itself is divided into many stages. Discovery of lead compound, early safety tests on the lead compound, lead optimization and preclinical trials. So what is a lead compound? Lead compound is a molecule that acts on the target and has the potential to become a new drug. So how do scientists seek out lead compounds? There are many ways. First one is general screening. In this, a library of compounds is created and each compound is tested for activity against the targets. Second, molecular modification. If a drug already exists, a new drug can be obtained by slight molecular modification. Take the case of carmestin, an anti-cancer drug. A slight molecular modification yields another compound lomastin which also exhibits anti-cancer properties. 3. Clinical observation. Sometimes clinical observation can lead to development of newer drugs. In 1942, some antibacterial sulfonamides exhibited hypoglycemia as their side effects. This stimulated research in this field and has led to the development of hypoglycemic sulfonylureas like tolbutamide, glybenclamide, etc. And many times leads are discovered by accidents or serendipity. A very good example is the case of discovery of penicillins by Sir Alexander Fleming. Once a lead is identified, early safety tests are carried out on the lead. Lead compounds are subjected to a series of detailed assessment of safety tests. Also, Preliminary pharmacokinetic studies like absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination are also carried out to prioritize lead compounds early in the drug discovery process. Because lead structures rarely possess all the desired qualities, the lead molecules are subjected to lead optimization and that is the next stage. In lead optimization, hundreds of analogs or molecules with slightly different structures are synthesized and tested and the molecule which possess better efficacy and lesser adverse effects is then carried out is then carried on to the next stage of drug discovery now let me give you an example of how molecular modification affects the properties of molecules what you see here is a beta lactam ring of the penicillin antibiotics 
the three major issues in the development of penicillin are one destruction by gastric acid two narrow spectrum of activity and three degradation by penicillinase the first penicillin discovered that is penicillin g has phenyl methyl side chain it is acid labile meaning destroyed by gastric acids and therefore cannot be given orally it has a narrow spectrum of activity and is degraded by beta lactamases a slight change in the side chain the phenoxy methyl group confers the molecule acid resistance but not penicillinase resistance substitution with dimethoxy phenyl group makes it penicillinase resistant and addition of amino benzyl group results in extended spectrum of activity similarly hundreds of analogs of lead molecules are synthesized and tested the ones with better activity profiles are taken forward to the next phase that is preclinical testing in preclinical testing the selected lead molecules are extensively evaluated in living cells tissues and animal models to determine if they can be tested in human beings the animal studies include pharmacokinetic parameters that is absorption distribution metabolism and elimination systemic toxicity studies which includes single and repeated dose toxicity studies lasting up to 6 months male fertility studies female reproduction and development toxicity studies teratogenicity studies perinatal study and local toxicity which includes dermal toxicity photo allergy or dermal photo toxicity vaginal toxicity toxicity at parental administration sites ocular toxicity studies inhalational toxicity allergenicity genotoxicity carcinogenicity and gross observation and microscopy of more than 30 internal organs now we shall discuss the drug development phase this phase includes investigational new drug application and safety phase 1 clinical trial phase 2 clinical trial phase 3 clinical trial new drug application and approval and phase 4 clinical trial first let us see what an ind application is before any clinical trial or human studies can begin companies must file an ind application with the regulatory agencies the ind application includes detailed manufacturing information stability and quality studies formulation information all the results of previous preclinical work and how the molecule is thought to act in the body and the details on the possible potential side effects that could be expected in the human studies the ind application also includes details on how when and by whom the human studies will be conducted after receiving permission from regulatory agencies and institutional ethics committees clinical trials or human studies can begin phase 1 clinical trial is a non therapeutic trial and the objective is to determine the safety of a new drug maximum tolerated dose the adverse reactions and pharmacokinetic profiles the study is conducted in healthy adult healthy human volunteers of both sexes phase 2 trial or therapeutic exploratory trial these are controlled studies conducted in a limited number of patients of either sex to determine therapeutic effects effective dose range and for the evaluation of safety and pharmacokinetics in patients another objective of this phase is evaluation of potential study endpoints therapeutic regimens including concomitant medications and target populations these studies are usually limited to 3 to 4 centers next phase 3 or therapeutic confirmatory trial the purpose of these trials is to obtain adequate data about the efficacy and safety of drugs in a larger number of patients of either sex in multiple centers usually in comparison with a standard drug and or a placebo if the standard drug does not exist for the disease under study this is to validate efficacy and safety found in phase 2 on successful completion of phase 3 trials permission is granted for marketing of the drug 
Next is FDA review and approval of marketing application. If phase 3 clinical trials reveal that the compound is both safe and effective, the sponsoring com company submits a new drug application to the FDA requesting approval to market the drug. These applications contain the results and data analysis from the entire clinical development program as well as from the earlier preclinical testing and proposals for manufacturing and labeling of the new medicine. Scientists, physicians and statisticians at the regulatory agencies review the data from all of the studies on the compound and after weighing the benefits and risks of the potential medicine decide whether to grant approval or not. Phase 4 and post marketing surveillance. After approval of the drug for marketing, phase 4 studies or post marketing surveillance is undertaken to obtain additional information about the risks and benefits resulting from long term usage of the drug in a large population. This phase also involves evaluation of the drug for any newer indication which is possible only from clinical observations. I have given you an overview of the drug discovery and development process. Now let us see what are the challenges faced by modern drug discovery. One is the time, it takes anywhere between 12 to 15 years to discover a new drug and the cost of discovery is enormous around 2.5 to 3.5 billion US dollars. Not only that, this process is very complex, time consuming and resource intensive. Apart from that, a target might be identified and validated early in the beginning, but it is observed that in many cases the drug fails late in the clinical trials. And another issue is, even though the drug may pass phase 3 clinical trials and get approval for marketing, but once the drug is exposed to a large population, rare adverse effects start becoming evident and this leads to withdrawal of drug from the market. This completes the lecture on drug discovery and development process. We have seen what drug discovery and development means, we have seen the different phases of drug discovery and development and challenges faced in the modern drug discovery and development. Hope you have found this informative. Thank you.